Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. All right, all right. Welcome to Romance at a Glance. This is your host, Shawnee. And I'm just here to tell you that this episode is actually a live recording of an Instagram Live that Bridget and I did, recapping our favorite books of 2020 and giving out awards. These are what we'd like to call the RAG Awards. And so authors that we really love will be getting a raggy. Thanks for tuning in. It's going to be so much fun. It's also going to be raw. And if you'd like to actually see the episode, it is on our Instagram IGTV. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Uh, B Dr. B says, I have been having your whole second season on repeat daily to deal with my anxiety. I think you two have been a lifesaver for many people who are alone during this time. Best company. Oh, thank you. We love you. Thank you. Damn. Well, you know what? I'm just going to do a plug for reviews right after that lovely sentiment. If you guys haven't reviewed the f- show yet and you have an iPhone or some sort of uh, uh, Apple device and you can go review the show, there's a link in our bio and link in all the show notes and you can go and drop us a review. It'll help us climb the old charts, climb the search ratings and let people know what you think about the show, but also let people kind of like verify that we are... Uh, Legit, you know? Legit. Exciting. You know what I'm saying? Fun. Also, if you don't know about the B-Dagger B, she is all things Black Dagger Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. um, And spicy and hot. Yes. And a little bit nasty. Yes. So uh, check her out, too, because (laughs) we be on there all the time, too. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Shani, I think we should, like, get into the awards. Should we, like, uh, get the shit popping? Let's get the shit popping, Bridget. Baba pop and bridge. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and here's where All me right. and Shawnee do a small dance. For those of you who listen to us normally, here's where me and Shawnee do a little yes. dance. While we we do a little th- dance. We think about our jingle. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. What you say now? Uh, and then uh, even though we don't need to take that long of a pause, we always do a little no, dance. No, we don't need to take a pause, but we always do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, Shawnee, today is the day. It is the RAG Awards, the Romance at a Glance Awards, or... The yes. Raggies, and we are here to give out some awards. Shani, are you ready? I am ready. What award would we like to give out first? It feels like we should start with what we always start with on the podcast, which is the cover. How do you feel about that? Ooh, okay. All right, okay. Because I, so well. like, I feel like we should go through the way we kind of go through, you know? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. We are going to talk today about our best cover. So we had a lot of covers this season, that were beautiful and a lot that were just like a standard cover and some yeah. that tricked us and made us believe the book was a they different, were very misleading. <laughs> a lot of misleading <laughs> covers, especially those illustrated ones. Um, but there was one cover that stood above the rest. When you looked at it, it sold the book to me. It's the reason we put it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and it was creative. It was very creative. The colors were gorgeous. And without further ado, we would like to present the Raggy for best cover to. Wait for it. Waiting for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here it goes. <gasps> Yay! Real Men ba, Knit ba, ba, ba. by Kiwana Jackson. Congratulations Real on your men. best cover rag award. Dun, ba, 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 ba. I feel like these are the. I feel like this uh, book cover was even more of a special win because you and I both don't really enjoy the animated covers as much. That's true. As as the other ones. So the fact that we love this cover actually had to climb a slightly more uphill. That's very that <laughs> that is that is a valid valid. But both thing. of us were like Timberlands. Timberlands. Is he wearing Timberlands and knitting. <laughs> Tell me more. Harlem <laughs> boys and four brothers taking over a knitting shop. Color me intrigued. <laughs> color me intrigued. That, and then it was a lot of colorful brothers. And I was like, Whoa. It was a very colorful adopted it was. brother family. I think they were mm-hmm. all adopted. Foster brothers? I think they were adopted. Yeah, they were all like foster brothers. <laughs> I think she, I think she either adopted fostered them. or adopted them. Yeah. Anyhow. This is the problem, problem with reading so many books is so that you're like books. fuzzy on the details. If it's been like over a month, I'm like, what was that book about again? <laughs> I think it was the one yes. that, or you start cross-pollinating <laughs> stories and you're like, no, 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 that's not the one. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Next up, All right, we would be talking about the best audiobook. I would say, Shani, how did you feel like the audio was in this book? How was the narrator? Tell us more about it. Oh, okay. So the one we chose for this, I'm the one who listens to audio. So let me tell you, this narrator, when I say he does it for me, he does it for me. And actually, when we were talking to, who were talking to, um, uh, we were talking to, dang, I just drew drew a blank. Um, she's from Britain. She wrote um, Chloe Brown. Talia Hibbert. Um, <laughs> Talia Hibbert. Thank you. I don't know why that just spaced out of my head. Yeah. Um, but this was also, she also said she loved this narrator and she doesn't really listen yep. to audiobooks, but That's this right. one got her. Um, so... She actually, didn't Without she say, point. she like listened to the entire series and then started another series and was like, wait a minute, what, are all books not this good? <laughs> not this good, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how many audiobooks she read, but out of the few she did, this was the one that she loved the best. Love it. And I have to say, he does an amazing job, and it's one of my favorite books that he is uh, narrating. Okay. So, without further ado, let me... Give you to you. It is. Wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh no! I think I hit it with my hand. There we go. I hit it with my hand. There we go. The rag award goes for best audio goes to Cressley Cole and Robert Petkoff. Yay! I, I love Robert Petkoff. Let me tell you. I wonder if I can find him on Instagram. Robert. Like, he narrates a lot of things, and everything he narrates is amazing. Gold. Um, when I was looking through his catalog, I was like, holy cow. I mean, not just romance, but he he narrates so many different books. Um, and he could read me the phone book. Any day or night, baby. Any day or night. Baby. All Robert, right. After we go through that, the next thing I would say to you is, Shani, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what the smuttiest part of the book was. <laughs> oh, actually, that's not true. Maybe best smut would go after feels because feels feels like. Uh, Let's do indie. Let's do indie, oh, indie because I accidentally already showed that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't see it because that's. <laughs> Okay, guys. Because the bottom of my tripod, I guess, acts like fingertips. So when I touch it to my computer, it's oh, like okay. scanned over. Okay, well, let's do the best indie then. You guys, we read a bunch all of right. indie books. One of the goals of the podcast, as you all know, is that we wanted to mm -hmm. make sure we explored some indie authors. And we yeah. happened upon this author at a signed book reading in Los Angeles. Not on purpose. We weren't seeking her out. And after the panel, we were like, hello, let's be best friends. And then we hello. read her book. And to our very, very, very pleasant surprise, it was five stars all around. We actually read five stars. her second book because we were like, well, let's read the next one too. Um, yes. This was in season one of our podcast. And without further ado, without further ado, the winner of the best indie of the RAG Awards 2020 is... Go ahead, Bridget. The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. Yay. Yes. If you guys have not read that series yet, it is awesome. It mixes two of our favorite, two of Shawnee's favorite things, two of our favorite things in general, but uh, a little bit of kinkery and historical romance and but like with a, definitely a feminist sort of lens. And it's awesome. It's a great book. Yes. And it happened to come at the right time because we had just started the podcast mm -hmm. and I had just started taking my uh, kink classes. Yep. And so it was like really great that this book came to us like exactly when it did. Yes. So yes, Scarlet Packham, we are here for you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Keep writing. Plus we also interviewed her and that was super, super fun. Super fun. Yes. Uh, let's see. So next, after Best Indie, I would probably go into The Fields Train. So Yes, let's go on The Fields Train. Let's go on choo The choo. Fields Train. This was really choo hard for choo. us because there were a couple books that were tugging at the old heartstrings. But as yeah, you know, were. we don't do anything by half measures except for quotes, in which I do 20 always. <laughs> uh, and so this year, 
by unanimous decision by Shani and I, we were the only voting members of the RAG Awards. We, we have chosen. You guys, I know that a lot of you are going to be listening to this on the podcast and not watching this, but Shawnee's reveals that she's doing right now. She's like putting her hand in front of the camera. It's wonderful. And I love it so much. The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hoang. Guys, this book. Super feelsy. So feelsy. I mean, the cover makes you think it's just going to be feels, but let me tell you, this book is also steamy AF. I have read a bunch of Helen's other books. If you were listening before Shawnee got on, I was telling you all about how I love her writing. I love her books. I'm super excited to keep reading her books in the future. I'm sure we'll cover another one of her books um, as she publishes more in the upcoming years. It's a this it's is definitely just a in great the field. book. Definitely in the yeah, field. because Bridget is always in the field. Always in the field. Let me tell you, she she reads for the field. I don't. Feels. I don't read for the field. <laughs> However, this book got me. Got me so good. So I know that if it got me, <laughs> then it is feelsy. It was feelsy, and I I it was complex. And it was so great. I love it. I love how they dealt with sex. Bam, 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 boom. Bam, 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 boom. Bam, 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 boom. Bam, 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 boom. <laughs> I think next we should take a, little, a quick dip into novella territory. A quickie da, 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 for da, 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 your da, da, da. quickie, you know, when you need a little boost, a little something, something. That's what I'm saying. But you maybe don't have time for 250 or 350 pages or exactly. 500 pages. You gotta get to work. And you just, you, you know, want to have it be like maybe 120 pages or less. So mm-hmm. we at the beginning of this podcast, didn't actually ever consider reading novellas. I don't think we talked about it. I think we just like happened to be recommended some. And then we were like, oh, this is fun. And also to be quite honest, it's a lot of books to read and review on a podcast in a year. So we also decided novellas are nice because the time to listen, especially for Shawnee, is significantly less. And so that leaves us more room for actually like editing the podcast, recording it, doing all of the other stuff that goes around making the podcast for you guys. So uh, we are very pleasantly surprised by the novellas that we read this year, including finding one of our favorite new authors, R.E. Hargrave. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I just spoiled it. Shani, do the reveal. She's revealing. Reveal it quick. R.E. Really? <laughs> Hargrave. R.E. Hargrave. We love dun, dun, you. Dun, dun, dun. Guys, we're so re- great. So nice. So smutty. <laughs> <laughs> it is incredibly smutty. Um, I... You know, if you guys listen to that episode, you know that we just love her and we love her books. And that book was so deliciously smutty and like took a new person to BDSM with an experienced dom and he took her on a journey, you guys. He took her on a delicious Mm -hmm. Christmas journey. Yes. And... I was just that was healthy. It was healthy. It was consensual. It was sexy as fuck. Like it was just great. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask for in a novella. I don't know. You know what I can ask for? Ari, keep writing keep these writing. novellas, especially Christmas novellas, because it's a gift to us. It's a gift. You know, it's a gift to us. And we're selfish, and we want that gift. Yes. Please keep writing, everyone. Okay. <laughs> what do you think we should do next? Let's see. We did those. Well, oh, we obviously, best. best smut is next. Yeah. Guys, we love to get smutty. You know that we love to get smutty. We love the we steamy love quotes. To get smutty. We love all of the deliciousness that romance can provide. Mm-hmm. And there was one book that stood above the others. In fact, yes. I think the title of that podcast I did was Our Smuttiest Book Yet. <laughs> <laughs> we since got to interview this author, and she was a goddamn delight. She's also a smoke show. Smoke show. Smoke show. Smoke show. show. Hottie, hottie, hottie. And also just hottie. beautiful personality. Our interview with her was so fun. We got to pop her cherry on podcasting. And she's wonderful. Without yeah. further ado, Shawnee, show the people. Bum, bum, bum. I'm going to show the people. I'm going to show the people. Ba-dum, ba-dum. Bum, 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 the Hunter by L.J. Shen. Best Smut Award. Best Smut. Oh, my God. That book was so nasty. <laughs> so nasty. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Shawnee, like, that book, like, rocked your socks off. Because I feel like we had had oh, a yes, bunch of did. books that weren't, that were, because we were in the contemporary seasons, so we had had a bunch of books in a row yeah. that had very, like, much lower steam levels. And I feel like we got to that books and you were like, what happened? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly. We had a closed door right before that, mm-hmm. and then some very light, very light, very vanilla books mm-hmm. or whatever. So at that point, like I was thirsty. <laughs> I was thirsty as shit. <laughs> I was like, someone, please give me some smut. Please leave the door wide open or whatever. And then that book came along, and I was like, thank you, baby Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. sweet baby Jesus. Halle- Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, you, LJ. Welcome. Prussia. Welcome to Prussia. Prussia. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I think that just leaves, you know, the best overall. I think that just leaves the best yes. overall. So there were a lot of books that could have been the best overall. Um, and we went through and we had about five contenders and yes, partially I will say that we did not want to have a book overlap two genres, two categories. Um, but this book was a five star read all around. Um, yes. we love the author also, also interviewed her and not that that influences our decision that her book was good cause we interviewed her after we read the book, but, um, it's just a great book. It's a great historical Teaser. It's a historical. Hello. Do you guys guess it? It was Shawnee's favorite of the historical season. My favorite, 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 favorite. I read uh, her book two, also five stars. I actually liked it better than I liked book one. Very excited about book three, which will be coming out in 2021. And uh, Shawnee, I feel like you should do the honors because this was um, your baby. My baby. All right. Let me bring it round over here, over here. Here we go. And the winner of best overall, Raggy, goes to Evie Dunmore. Okay, so just like to add my two cents on top of what Bridget said. Like, I think that, like, I didn't realize over time that, um, you know, you grow as a person. (laughs) And that also means... (laughs) realize over time that you grow as a person (laughs) when you when you grow as a person you grow as a reader oh yes and what you like to read when you were 20 shifts to from like what I want to read now right so at a certain point I was reading stuff same storylines and stuff from when I was a younger, Mm -hmm. where I accepted a lot more stuff from the heroes and the heroines and whatever and now that I am a grown-ass adult I wanted more from the story. Mm -hmm. I wanted more complexity of character. um, And I just wanted a smart read. Yeah. You know, something that kind of challenged me as I was reading. um, And it was just different. And this book for me, like, I think we talked about it on the podcast. I was like, ah, I just need, I need more from a book. And then this book came along and I was like, yes, this is intelligent writing. This is so much fun. There's so romance. Yeah. There's still a feisty uh, a heroine. I also like that she wasn't looking for anything but peace and quiet mm. for the yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. <laughs> she joined these suffragettes because because she was like if I join them that I can get some peace and quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and that I mean who don't want some peace and quiet? Yeah. She's like I have to join them to keep my scholarship, so I will. But I'm gonna yes. try to do as little as possible. <laughs> yeah. And then talking to Evie. Uh, was amazing. It was uh, one of my favorite. I mean, I love interviewing authors, mm-hmm. but she was one of my favorite interviews. Yeah. I mean, uh, just amazingly intelligent and also has another so much beautiful, to say. beautiful lady. Also, yes, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just I could have talked to her for like another three hours, yeah. like about all sorts of things. And I'd like to talk to her. And if I ever decide to, you know. Head over to Germany. I'm going to go stalk her and yes. knock on her door and be like, yo, Evie, what's up? Yes. Let's have some tea. <laughs> Scarlett, hi. Scarlett. Shawnee, show her Scarlett. her awards. You guys, Scarlett Peckham, the Peckham, Peckham, author of The Duke Peckham. and I, our best indie of the year, just joined. Hello, how are you? The Duke I tempted. The Duke I tempted. What did I say? I don't even know. The du- <laughs> it's okay, because we just ended up, we were just watching that. Oh. <laughs> the Duke I tempted. Jeez Louise. The Duke I tempted. Yeah. Best. Indy, Scarlett Peckham, Scarlett Peckham. <laughs> Guys, we also, obviously, I, are, I was telling them, Scarlett, how we met you at the panel um, at Creating Conversations and how we stumbled upon you. And we're so, so happy that we did. And we're so happy that we got to interview this summer and just so excited for all the future books you're going to be writing and we're going to be reading. Yeah. <laughs> 
We are going to be following the journey. Yes. Uh. Yes. yes. I'll send. I'll, uh, I'll be posting these later, so I'll tag you in it, too. So you can have your own little plaque. <laughs> <laughs> I think that rounds out our individual awards. Yes. Shani, do you want to do your top five first? Yes. I'm going to do my top five. So our top five do not include the awards we already gave. Yes. Um, just FYI. Yes. Um, and so these are my top five awards that I am, um, and I'll tell you why, when I uh, show you. Watch this reveal. Look at this. Boom. About to, oh, about she's about to, to it reveal over. it, everybody. Boom. Here oh. it goes. About to reveal that. Boom. Boom. In your face. In your face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. So my top five, uh, well, we got to start with The Beast by Katie Roberts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Honestly, the smut. Mm-hmm. The BDSM smut. Also, it was BDSM done right. Yes. Um, there was a little bit. It had that feel of dark romance, but it wasn't. It wasn't a dark romance, and I, I like that a lot. Uh, Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. Uh, we met Tessa Dare at a panel at some point um, last year, and Wallflower Wager was just, like, super fun. The book was, like, really lively. The characters really made you laugh. You laughed out loud in this book, and it was great. Oh, whoops. I made a mistake on my graphic, I just realized here. Cherished Heart is by Nalini Singh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was filling in yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Cherish Hard by Nalini Singh. And I love Cherish Hard. I love Nalini Singh. Let's just put that, yes. let's just put that out yes. there. Uh, I love Nalini Singh like no other. Interviewing her was one of the highlights of my life. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was an awesome interview. She's Go make that duck, Scarlet. I see you. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Um, we got Lover Awaken, uh, by J.R. Ward, because, like, Zadist, who we call Zadist, even though it might be Sadist, but (laughs) whatever. (laughs) That book is just hot, and we love the love story, and we love broken characters who find love. Like, that's just great. And Lord of Scoundrels, I really love, because the hero is just a dick like he's just not a good person but you're able to like follow the journey find redemption and laugh so much along the way so these are my top five and i will fix Cher's heart in a minute <laughs> um, but bridget let's talk about your top five sure so my top five are are you ready for the reveal I'm ready for the review. Do it. <laughs> so my top five, you guys, if you listen to the podcast, you know that my favorite book of the year was Heat Stroke by Tessa Bailey. I think that Tessa Bailey is wonderful. I love you so much. Um, if you guys did not um, see on her Instagram, she, her husband is actually in the hospital right now. So we are sending you our thoughts. And um, he has COVID and they are battling that. So we are sending you our thoughts. We love you so much. If you guys haven't read Tessa Bailey's books, they're incredible. Her Dirty Talk is I mean, if we had had a dirty talk as a category, she definitely would have won. Um, she just won, writes totally. it so, 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 so well. Heatstroke is a male male. It's sweet. It's funny. It's just great. I love it. Uh, Dragon Actually by G.A. Aiken. Guys, I'm loving G.A. Aiken. I also did a giveaway of her other series, and it's awesome. She's uh, – it's Shelly Lawrence, Lawrenceton. Is that how you say it, Johnny? Lauren? Lawrenceton? You guys, now I'm, like, doubting my pronunciation. Loring, I, I Loringston. Know. Loringston. Lawrence. I'm going to mess it up just like. <laughs> I'm in my head about it now. Anyways, it's her alter, alter author ego. And her books are very steamy and just like very, I appreciate they're like viscerally violent. And when people go to war, they're like splitting heads. And then she's like the blood splayed, you know, sprayed all across their faces. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. I did actually hope that the dragon was going to in some way, like have sex with her, but like, Maybe not like fully, but like chase her down as a dragon and then have sex with her as a man or something. We talked about it all in the podcast episode, but um, I still love that book. Yeah, we wanted some dragon love. I wanted some dragon love. Uh, Pink Slip by Katrina Jackson. I love that book. It is so fun and sexy. I love a suspense romance. I know Shawnee has a hard time letting go of reality and it's like everyone (laughs) stop fucking when like you're in danger, but I completely understand it and I would also be fucking if there was danger. So Katrina Jackson, I love you. If you guys haven't read Pink Slip, it's super, super fun. It's not super long. I think it's like 200 pages maybe. I've also read the subsequent books in that series and they are also all great. Uh, That one is 
male, female, female thruple. And it was our first thruple of the year. And it is always going to have a soft place in my heart. And I bought it at the Ripped Bodice, uh, the romance store in Los Angeles. So that was fun too. Nice. Uh, next. Hashtag support local businesses. Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> next up is also the Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. You guys, I love this book. I thought the book was so funny, so charming. It was my, what a, like one of my first ever historicals that I ever read. And I was like, historicals are great. <laughs> these are, this book is hilarious. She has all these animals and she's just like barging into his room in the middle of the night. I love this book. And it was like a classic, like sunshine, grumpy bear trope. And I loved that. And I uh, was super here for it. And then last but not least, Lover Mine. I love John Matthew. I love Zex. They're great. I just love them. And it was like so many books coming, you know? So I also feel like this was my favorite book because, you know, I think it was book number eight or nine. I think it was nine. And um, yeah. or nine or ten. I don't know. I think it was nine. I think it was nine. It was nine. And, uh, you know, so it's like, well, I had so many books before that to like fall in love with John Matthew and then fall in love with Zach separately and then fall in love with them together and all the mistakes they made. And then they finally got their shit together and are in love and it's wonderful. And I'm so happy. Those are my top fives, Johnny. I feel like we had a a really, really good year on the podcast. Hey, Deja. Yes, we had a very good year on the podcast, let me tell you right now. Like, and this last season, the smutty season, the, like, kinky, Mm -hmm. media sim, nasty season was a very, very great season. (laughs) It was a very good season. Honestly, what? Okay. Let's just be real. Let's talk frankly here for a second. Always. Like, like we don't always. Always. (laughs) I don't talk this frank usually on, on my Instagram, but. But, uh, I mean, getting through 2020, however you needed to get through it, mm-hmm. I think had to include a lot of masturbation. <laughs> like, like, I don't see another just, way. Were people not masturbating? I, I mean, I don't see any other way. I Stress, also feel like, anxiety. though, Shani, you've always been, like, an every day, right? Like, once a day at minimally? Oh, at minimally, yes. Yeah. So, like, I feel like I also am a one a day. And... Uh, and like obviously you're at home and you're like bored. So you're like sometimes like, well, what am I gonna do right now? <laughs> it's, it's like yeah, second or third time, who knows? But um, it's like you know people have to have their coffee every day. Yes, you know. Yes, that's that's just my or so, some people smoke a blunt every day sure. so they could ease out yeah. and be even keeled. For me, that just eases everything out, yeah. even keel, and makes everything yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I'm happy, it makes me happier. If I'm sad, it makes me happier. It makes me happier. <laughs> if I'm really mad, it mellows me down. It lets me look it at things more down. objectively. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. And also, I, I, I hope that also our podcast uh, uh, tagline, May Your Books Be a Lover and Your Hand Your Best Friend, also has inspired people and made them aware that they're not alone. We also like reading sassy books that are... Very, very, very sexy. And then thinking very about sexy. them. Whilst we have and orgasms. Then, <laughs> <laughs> and then thinking some more. And then uh, thinking some more. Yes. <laughs> Aptly put. I, yeah, I mean, I was going to, Shania, I was going to prepare ahead of time. And then I didn't. But I was going to prepare ahead of time and tell you the breakdown of, like, how many episodes we did and how many different genres we did and all these cool things. I was going to tell you, like, a lot of cool things. And then I was like, you know what? It's 2020. It's the end of 2020. 2021, you guys, I'm going to give you so many fun stats at our end of the season. You're not even going to know what to do with them. It's going to be so exciting. But this season, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to show up. I'm going to put on some makeup. And uh, that's as far as, far as I'm going to get. I did choose the books ahead of time. We chose the books yesterday, so that's exciting. But uh, I will give you one step. Our goal was to reach 12,000 downloads by the end of the year, and we are at 13,500. So we want to thank everyone who has listened to the show, shared about the show, tagged us in things, um, you know, told your friends that they would like us, became our friends, became our patrons. We really appreciate each and every one of you because obviously, you know, we could just like do this into a vacuum and into a void, but it's more fun to talk to you and talk to other people and all these authors and it's great. great. Lastly, real quick, I just want to give out a shout out to our patrons. Okay. We got Annette, B. Dagger B. Uh, we got Catherine, Hi, Catherine, we got Natalie, of course we got Daniela hey. and Molly, hey. the OGs. Yes. Okay. We got uh, Asia, we got Nina, which I'm so glad it shows your name 
in the beginning, we didn't know who Nina was because yeah. it gave us only a letter. Yeah. We're like, N? Who's N? Uh, Interesting. Okay. Who's N? Wants to be anonymous. Okay. <laughs> you know, and we got Rosie. So uh, let me tell you right now, if you guys don't know, when, when you uh, join to be a patron, Bridget and I get ridiculously excited. <laughs> Like, we do dances. <laughs> One or the other person immediately calls and is like, we have a new patron. It's so exciting. <laughs> they want to be so friends exciting. with us. <laughs> What's their names? Where are they from? <laughs> Every time we pass a new hurdle of, like, numbers, I call, I'll, like, text Shawnee and be like, Shawnee, today was our best day on the podcast ever. <laughs> or I'll be like, Shawnee, this is our best week of all time. This is the best month of all time. <laughs> yeah. And I, I – it's a, it was funny because in the beginning, we – as we were growing more quickly – we were like me personally. I was always shocked. I'm like, who's out there? Who's listening? Who's, yeah. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> they should message me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I'm always so excited every time. Like a little kid, I think you know. Sometimes you become an adult, and things are just not as exciting anymore. You don't have that like. There's very few things that are new to you. Mm -hmm. So every time there's something new to you and a moment to find excitement, it's like amazing when you do. You're just like, yes. <laughs> I told Shawnee because so we clap for my toddlers, like, you know, when they do like anything, basically. It's like, oh, my God, you stood up. Yay. You sat yay. down. Yay. <laughs> this is Shawnee. I was like, 2021. I was like, I'm going to be your hype man about everything. I'm going to be like, Shawnee, this is a great outfit. Shawnee, you are doing a wonderful job today. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm going to clap at her because everybody needs to be cheered up. Everybody needs to be excited about everything. Cause it I know, does make I we're both you each other's hype. Yeah, our, our own like our own hype team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got out of bed today. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, I you did. did get you showered. Oh shit! It's about to get oh, real shit. today. Bonus. <laughs> I feel really proud of myself that I put these lips on today. I was Your like, lips look oh. and very nice. Crazy enough, I've never been somebody who can like put on lipstick. You know, those people who can just go like swipe, swipe, and whatever. Yeah. And I was in such a rush to put it on, I just. I did it, and afterwards I was like, oh, shit, did I just become that bitch? Like, <laughs> you know what I think? Shawnee, I don't know if this is offensive or not, but I'm going to say it anyways because you're my friend. Yeah. I feel like you would be that person because you have the perfect canvas for lipstick. Because <laughs> look at how beautiful your lips I, are. My lips are so small, really, I feel like it would be harder for me than for you because I have small <laughs> lips. My upper lip is almost I mean, not exact. When I smile, you can barely see it. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but sometimes I over it ends up overdrawing them. <laughs> you're like a toddler. In another, life, like, <laughs> in another life, I used to be really good at at makeup. I could never do the lips thing, but in another life, I used to put on full shows. Yeah, with, yeah, with tons of costumes and makeup and all sorts of stuff, performing and all that stuff. So, like, it's sometimes when I put on when I like do my hair and do my lips and stuff, and people are like, "Oh my gosh!" and I'm like, "You." You don't even know. You don't, you don't even, even know, know how crazy it used to be. You don't even know. I know. I put on mascara today know. and I was like, oh, I have eyelashes. I just forget because they're so light when there's no mascara on them. I always <laughs> like when you put on mascara because it makes your eyes just like. I know. I know. I wanted, I told you before, right before COVID happened, I was going to get those those like semi-permanent fake ones. Not the like super crazy yeah. ones, but like the ones that just look no, like. No, I know the one you're talking about. And then COVID happened and I was like, well, I'm not going to let someone breathe in my face for two hours. Like that seems unhealthy. So <laughs> here we are. But maybe I will after in 2022. That's going to be my eyelash year, 2022. <laughs> I did realize today, I don't know if you realize this, when you put on your lipstick, that uh, I haven't worn makeup since February, basically. And um, no. yeah. so I was like, oh, all this makeup needs to be thrown out because it's been, <laughs> it's been almost a year and I haven't used it. And it's just like, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I brought a band, uh, I bought a brand new mascara like last, the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And I went to use it. Because it hadn't been opened, and it was definitely, like, cakey, dunsies. Yeah, mine is definitely. Like, oh, well. Also, one of my, I... one of my. Um, <clears throat> Hi, memes. I bought, like, face, uh, what's it called? Foundation. For, uh, Foundation. like, because we were, like, starting to do a whole bunch of, like, whatever, on-camera stuff. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'll <laughs> buy some foundation. Just, like, you know, smooth it out. Not anything crazy. Not anything, like, you know, thick or whatever. Just a little bit. And yeah. <laughs> our bathroom gets so cold because we don't heat our house that it is like clumpy at the bottom because it must be like getting so cold that it's like conge like like it's Congealing. separating or something like that. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's Pretty disgusting. Much. That needs to go in the trash. I have a whole I have a whole pack of brand new makeup that I just never have not opened. It's not it's just been sitting all year. Twenty twenty, it's been taking a rest. But 
to be fair, like 98% of it is still good. Yeah. So when I step into 2021, okay? You're ready. Still quarantined in my house. <laughs> <laughs> still not leaving until uh, still not November leaving of anywhere. next year when it's finally our turn I- for a vaccine. <laughs> I don't think I'll be going anywhere till 2022, but you know, twos are my year. So I was hey, like, you know what? Hey, 2022. That's, that's what's going to hey, happen. <laughs> hey, so 2022. But I'm determined. I, I Since I put this makeup on today, I was like, you know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to do my makeup. I'm going to do my makeup tomorrow just to start off the year with a little polish. I love this. You know what I'm saying? I love this. <laughs> Let's take some photos of yourself with your microphone because our intern told me that we need more behind the scenes photos. <laughs> <laughs> So now that you're wearing makeup today and tomorrow, it's a good day to be taking your behind the scenes photos. That's not that's not a that's not a bad idea. I'm gonna do that because I, I feel good today. I feel like I'm looking real good. You do look good. I, so I like, like those every, earrings. All of you guys will see it. Oh, you like these? I do like, like those. I put these on for you. I was like, go and put these on for Bridget. Mm-hmm. I do like a good hoop earring. I you know I used to have very like varying sizes, like big ones, medium ones, but then yeah. I haven't worn them in a long time because. Because you have kids. Because little kids who yank they on your ears. Rip them out of your ears. so much. So they become deadly weapons. It does. <laughs> and so I have gotten out of the habit. But I wore earrings today. Some sparkle. Very cute. And I... Once Molly gets to be like around three and she's not pulling things out of your ears anymore, I'm like, I'll get you a really nice set. Yes. I, well, I've decided that I'm going to just start wearing them. It's kind of like your makeup thing tomorrow. I'm going to just... I have to... Like, I have to like not wear sweatpants every day anymore. I have to... <laughs> like, just put on the jean shorts. And a t-shirt. Yeah. Like, not get crazy. Yeah. But, like, it can't be, like, the workout shirt I wear. It has to be, like, a t-shirt still, but a non-workout t-shirt. It can't sure, yeah. say Under Armour on it <laughs> or any sort of race <laughs> that I've run in the past. It has to be a regular shirt, regular pants, and I have to shower every day. These are my I'm 2021 Tomorrow goals. I w- <laughs> I'm with you. Tomorrow I will not wear a onesie. I will put on a real <laughs> outfit and prance around in that yeah. at your house <laughs> and not leave uh, although yeah. i do go on walks so it's like the it's like the sad thing is like the neighborhood does see me in my outfits and i'm sure they're like that white girl's crazy <laughs> she's always in sweatpants is she okay <laughs> like <laughs> some days i am okay and some days you know it's so weird for me actually so like part of uh the way my brain processes is it processes mouths i've told you this um so when I am looking at somebody and talking to them, mm-hmm. my eyes are totally fixed on their mouth. Mm-hmm. It's just always been that way since I was a kid. So with everybody wearing a mask, mm. it, it did this thing where it short circuits my brain when they're talking to me, like like almost like they're not really talking to me. Interesting. Or whatever. Um, and it's it's so hard for me when people are talking through the mask. You know, I've accepted it like my brain. I'm like, this is what it is. But it's still not something that really connects. Uh, and so when I got back and we went to do something for the first time, because when I first saw you, we weren't wearing masks. Mm-hmm. Like we had quarantined and did mm-hmm. a thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we weren't wearing masks. But then we went out to go to the grocery store and we were wearing masks. And I could just, I just saw your eyes. Mm-hmm. And I, it tripped me out. <laughs> it was so strange for me. I was just like... <laughs> I feel like I also have a very expressive face in general, and I make a lot of facial. And for me, I have a hard time because I feel like when you only see my eyes, it's like I don't feel like you get the full emphasis of like, no, I'm not <laughs> mad at you. I am smiling at you, dear. I'm smiling. Check out, yes. check out person at the grocery store. I see you once every two weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just generally, you find your extra cheery. You know, it's, <laughs> I wonder you find that you that you try to smile through your oh, words I always when you're try talking. To smile. Like, I always smile under the mask, even though they can't see me. Because I'm like, my eyes yeah. probably look. My husband told me I should smile more because they oh, can't because they can't see. And I was like, you know, I smile. Don't you don't you tell me I don't smile. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got That's you. That's how bro. I got you, son. <laughs> Actually, he tricked me into marrying him, as you know. So I I could see that because like I feel like. Leo is like a little bit of a nerdy dude. A so little bit. He got a really. He got, I was trying to be generous okay. there, but he, but he. Uh, I feel like he was like, you know what? I can't go on the straight on like like super buff macho man way. So I gotta go in through the side door. You know what I'm yep. saying? I got I got swoop in from the side. In. Six months of <laughs> just eking his way into best friend territory, and then he was like, Three. "We should date." And I was like, "You but, bitch." <laughs> 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 but also, yes, I'll let you pay for this dinner. Let's go. <laughs> well, he had already been paying for dinners for six months of friendship. Hell yeah. And I was like, I support it. 
was like, Smart at Leo. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's great. I'll keep him. Anyway. I'll keep him. You know how a lot of people threaten. These are the kind of tangents. Threaten they're going to leave <laughs> his, go. uh, their husbands or threaten they're going to leave their partners, you know? Well, if yes. you do that, then maybe I'll just leave. I never do that. I'm always like, <laughs> it's always like a positive. Like, if, I'm like, you know yeah. what? I lo- I'm going to keep you too. I like you today. I'm going to keep you. That's how you, <laughs> that's how you know if you're like, otherwise I just won't say shit. But like, if I'll say it if you're, I give i I'm like, what you do to children. You always want to reinforce the positive behaviors yep. not reinforce the negative <laughs> behaviors <laughs> a lot of times i i just threaten to murder them in, in oh murder uh, yeah cut, in very cutting specific, perhaps specific ways mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah, I do that. like i will hang you over this banister <laughs> yeah. and then kick you yes i get very creative with it yes i, I <laughs> because there's something yeah. <laughs> about threatening violence yeah that makes you feel like you like it lets the release out like i will punch you in the neck yes. and then yes. you're like huh, and yes. then they just laugh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I know where you sleep. I'll suffocate you. I know where you sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I frequently threaten to murder murder Leo. <laughs> Do you want to make it to you? You know what's next hard birthday? when you have children is that like you can't say that because kids don't understand, you know? So <laughs> Yeah. That's hard. Cause I'll like whisper in his ear now and creative. I'm like, I will come after you. <laughs> it makes it so much more menacing when you have to like whisper it at someone while you're hugging so that your kids don't hear. So your kids I will don't hear. cut you up I'll into cut little you. pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to our dark yeah. season, you guys. It's coming yes. up. I'm excited actually for our dark romance season because, um, as people who read it know, consent is murky at best. So mm-hmm. that we're going in knowing that. Mm-hmm. So that's not something we're judging the book like right. against the book. Right. And with the the Bridgertons that just came out mm-hmm. with like the kind of scandals behind, um, you know, consent of him wanting to have children mm-hmm. or not. And her kind of going against that, his will on that, right. whether that falls, you know, where it falls in consent. <laughs> I've not reached that episode yet. Yep. Um, and even though, so the, it's funny too about the Bridgertons because like, I have some problems, like some problems with the show itself. Mm -hmm. However, I it still doesn't negate the fact to me that it's just it's a show. It's for fun, like. And if this show does well, more shows will get made, and they'll get made better and better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the one thing why I'm rooting for the show. It's the same reason why you root for like. The Princess and the Frog or Crazy Rich Asians or whatever. Right. It's because it's it's you want more of that thing to get right. made or whatever. Um, I do think so book, like I think certainly the rest of the books don't have the same problematic moments. Like no, like I don't, th- I don't this is the only so. one that has like that scene of like, you know, some people are saying that's full on rape, some people are saying that it's sexual assault, some people are saying that it's um I don't know, kind of like everywhere in between in that sort of spectrum. Yeah. Um, certainly everyone is seeing that it's not right. <laughs> like she's wrong yeah. for that. Um, but I don't think, I I don't think she, any of the other that. books have anything uh, like that. I don't so. remember. I definitely I don't know the one through four having... though because I recently read those. Yeah. But when you talk about historical, you're going to talk about problematic. Oh, I yeah. mean, just in general, any <laughs> things that happened back then sucked. Mm-hmm. They sucked a lot. So... It's kind of like this thing. Yeah, all these dukes um, weren't hot with all their teeth and abs, please. Yeah, <laughs> you know, these dukes are old-ass like Anthony... men marrying young-ass ladies who are sold by their dads to them. Exactly. <laughs> and, like, even in, you know, season one, you have Anthony, who's sleeping with the yeah. the uh, opera singer, yeah. and he can't marry her, no. and, and he's promising her things that he ends up taking yeah. away, and he's a total dick to her. Yeah. Like, that's also... Highly problematic. Sure. He's a fuck boy. We would call him a fuck he boy a fuck right boy, now yeah. if that a was rake. like nowadays. A rake's like a fun term for <laughs> yeah. a historical fuck boy. <laughs> a rake, a rake is the, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. I want a t shirt that says <laughs> Rake equals fuck boy. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, everything is problematic. And I think that it's important to understand that we don't need to have stories without problematic things in them. Mm-hmm. Because if you look, if I look at my life, right, yeah. that's the truth of what's happened to me. There's a lot of problematic things sure. because that shit happens. Sure. So it's more about how you, you address tell, it versus the fact, like not excluding it, but making sure that you address it. That you address it. Right. Exactly. So things happen that are problematic and it'd be nice to see how those things can be dealt with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're just part of a story. So it's, I'm a little, t- I get a little bit torn on the, where you draw the line mm-hmm. on like, if we never show anything, 
with anything that could be problematic, then then essentially you might have somebody who's going through something and they never see a representation of that thing that's happening. If yeah. you never see like if you're not if you never see an abusive relationship on TV, then how do you know what that looks like? Or, or how in- do you know, like, I, I've heard a lot of people who talk to us who are listeners who say that they like dark romance or they like romances where something bad has happened to the hero or heroine because something has bad has happened to them and they want to know that love and happily ever after is in their future and is a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I, I, I just think that sometimes we got to, there's some stuff we got to chill on. There's some stuff we can do better on, yeah. I think, as a society or whatever. Um, like, I, for one, I just did not like the way they wrapped up the racism in the Bridgertons yeah. with the 20-second conversation yeah. of how, how they ended it. I think it. they should have just <laughs> left it out. They should have left it out. I'm with you because we had gotten to episode three without ever talking about why there wasn't a white and black people in No one even mentioned that society. anyone was, in a, was a different no. color at all. Not at all. And I was totally fine Mm -hmm. with it. I was absolutely fine with it. Where I got, like, super appalled was when they were like, oh, the king married a black woman, and now, and then it became in fashion, and now everybody's just open for it. Yeah, And And it was was literally, like, a 30-second explanation for how race works in the society. And I was like, you guys should have said nothing and let that shit ride. (laughs) Yeah. You should have just been like, this is, like, this is fiction. This is not history. And so this is the history, this is the fictional historical world that we, I mean, everyone has their fucking teeth. I'm bringing it back to the teeth, Sean, you know, I have a teeth thing, but everyone has their teeth and they all have had braces. Like, this is not (laughs) real history, people. This is is not real history. A romance. It is. Uh, I I like feeling like the Bridgertons is more of a fantasy. They made it look like a fantasy. And so I kind of stopped thinking of it as a historical Yeah, it doesn't have that, like, like, um... It doesn't have the same, like, dirt on it that you it should in the sense of, like, everyone's clothes should not be that clean or that new yeah. looking well, or, like, the floors are polished. and like. Well, think about you know. the balls, right? Yeah. Think about those big parties. Everybody would have been sweating their asses off. Yeah. More people would be standing outside trying to get air for themselves. Sure. The the costumes in general are not um, are not yeah. accurate to they're they're, they're it's too the time period is too yeah. very yeah. <laughs> you know what I thought yeah, was funny varied. was like but Mama Bridgerton goes to see the Queen was that like episode two and she's like <gasps> like walking around like oh my god and I was like yo lady your house and all these balls you've been going to are fucking crazy like why would you be this yeah. like presumably she would have gone to the royal residences at some point because her husband was a lord so like I was like why is she this like impressed i feel like she should have been like like oh cool gold scroll work on these 30 foot ceilings <laughs> i should get that at my house like this lady is rich as fuck. <laughs> i mean i don't know because i know that to be invited you had to be a certain amount of kind of status sure, yeah. and true. the bridgerton mom is not seen as in fashion because she has so many children yeah, and they all live with her um, and sit with her too. they all live with her yeah, they all true. eat together they all so she's a little bit more on the outskirts and rambunctious she had a love match yeah you that's know true. like so she's she's not kind of seen as the echelon um that's necessarily true. um but <laughs> but there were definitely moments where um that people were shocked about what was happening. And I was like, this shouldn't have been your first time doing what you're doing. This is the first time we're seeing you do yeah. X, Y, Z, but it shouldn't have been the first time in the in the series. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I find that that I have decided to accept the Bridgertons as a piece of fiction that happens in a fantasy land. I don't actually think of it as it happening in England because England don't look like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no smell smoke like anywhere in London. Like this, like at that time, everything was like cloudy with smog and like industrial. What up, Jen? Hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's the thing for me. Bridgerton's mythical land. It's all. Uh, it's not. I don't put it in in real, reality realm yeah. because they. They took me out of that. And also the modern music. Yeah. I don't want to hear Ariana no, thank like you that. next in my, you know, I, I'm just yeah, like, like what? why can't we, why? they talk about Mozart. Like, why can't it just be Mozart? What's wrong yeah. with Mozart? Yeah. Why, why is, I don't, I, I feel like they did it to be cool. They did it right? to be they cool, were like, for yes. sure. Millenni- millennials will love it if we put in modern, <laughs> they did it, yeah. modern music. It'll be so cool. I mean, and to I'm be like, fair, 
Hi, happy new year. Hello, Christian. <laughs> like, to be fair, they weren't wrong in the sense that it is top 10 in Netflix around the world in every single country. And it's number one in the U.S. Yeah. today. So they weren't wrong. I think there were a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, we don't yeah. like that decision. But at the same time, like, they wanted to make a popular show and they fucking succeeded. Yeah. So with all these problems, it's like. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, you are correct in the fact that, like, maybe they are not wrong. I mean, for an audience that does not read romance yeah. novels, maybe this works for them because yeah. they have no expectations. Yeah, and I would, I I would say, like, I mean, if they're number one in the world, definitely a lot of people are watching it who've never read a romance novel. Never read, yeah. certainly never read that one. I'd be curious to see how many people watch the first one, and then if they make a second one, watch the second the one. The second season. Like, so, yeah. So how many people get, it retains, you know, from the first season? I feel like Netflix um, does a good job because, obviously, they control their own platform, and they can control, like, what they share with you in the trending tab and, like, up on the front screen. So it's like they can, I mean, they can make oh, yeah. anything. The Bridgertons has been at the top of my Netflix for, like, mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so frankly so I, I do watch a lot of romances so yeah. <laughs> I am the target market <laughs> I watch a lot of most of my Netflix is K-dramas have Chinese dramas uh, a few Japanese dramas but like have you watched um, the li the literary and potato peel society of or Guernsey and the pota literary potato peel society mm-mm Shawnee so. Is that the one where they fly to like an island? Yes. And it's, it's like a incredible. It's based off of a book also, if you guys haven't watched it. Michel uh, Guzman. I'm not sure how to actually say his name. He was in um, Game of Thrones and he was in, he's like a beautiful, beautiful man. Anyways, he's in it. Um, it's a great, it's a great adaptation. And it's also just yeah. a great book uh, in general. I highly recommend, or great movie in general. I highly recommend it. Guernsey. And the Potato Peel Great. Society. It's not about... So, okay, I'll explain. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Jen. I will explain the plot of the movie and book. So, basically, it's about this writer post-World War II, and she gets a letter from someone on this island who is looking for a copy of a specific book, and she... Um, ends up going there because the story behind his writing group, which is called the Potato Literary and Potato Peel Society, and so she ends up going there and befriending these people. And the reason it's called that is because the Germans occupied their island and um, they got stopped one night. And to explain why they were all together, they said that they were in a literary society and they just were making up the name as they went along. And everyone was just like, potato peel <laughs> society. And they, the Germans were like, uh, I guess. So the Germans would send an officer to like listen into the, so they ended up becoming a book club because they had yeah. no other choice. They had to do it to protect um, the fact that they really had a pig, which they weren't allowed to have because the Germans had confiscated all their pigs. So anyway, so she goes to this island and meets them all and sort of uncovers what happened to them during the occupation. Um, and it is, it's a wonderful romance and it's a great movie and I highly recommend it on Netflix. Nice. It's, they do eat a potato pie. <laughs> it's like they don't have any other food, so they just bake a pie made of just potatoes with no salt, just no butter, nothing. It's just baked in a pie shape of potatoes. Yeah. Let me tell you, I had this lady. She was a Russian lady who I just met randomly at like an art show, mm -hmm. and she brought out this big bowl of potatoes, cooked potatoes, mm -hmm. um, whole. They were super whole. Mm -hmm. And it, apparently it's like a delicacy or whatever, mm -hmm. or a special traditional dish. And I just thought, she handed me the potato, and in my mind I was like, well, I'm going to eat this potato because it's a potato. I'm okay with eating that. But I thought, oh, this is going to not be a very delicious potato. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently, like, you you boil it in, like, the, in this brine, this super salty, 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 salty water, and maybe, like, garlic and some other things or whatever. And, like, it has so much flavor in this potato. But by the time you get it, it's, like, dried on the outside, so it just looks like, just looks like a potato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you bite into it, you're like, oh, snap, <laughs> this, this potato is, this hot potato is hot potato. <laughs> and you're like, can I have another one? She's like, no. <laughs> one for everyone. One is for everyone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, all right. 
This is how many tangents we go on. All the tangents uh, on the podcast. I feel that like, I I feel like we should just leave out. all these tangents in for the podcast peeps. I mean, why not? Why not? Our, the podcast is an hour and a half anyway. Yeah, <laughs> always. It's always an hour and a half. Actually, this is only an hour and six minutes. So this is a oh, short shit, one. We're doing good. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Well, you all, we, uh, that is our wrap up for season five. Dang, it was season five? Season five, yeah. Season five is over. Holy cow, Bridge. Yeah. That's, I can't believe that. Mad props to you and to me for doing five seasons, continuing. I think they say something like 40% of all podcasts stop within the first year. Made it. Made it. <laughs> Nailed it. Big year Nailed coming it. up in 2021. Yeah, yeah, winning. Yeah, winning. <laughs> we're, we're winning. Uh, I think also the fact that we've been doing it for as long as we have also in- just increases our chances as well. Like if you make it past the first year, then the chances of you continuing on goes up exponentially or whatever. So that's also very exciting. Yes. Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm not quitting this podcast no matter what. Yes. <laughs> Next year, <laughs> 2021, end of year, we will be having... Hopefully, our end of the year discussion together at the same time in the same place, because hopefully by then we will all have been vaccinated and that will be very exciting. And uh, I might be in my new house. Like, that might be fun. Assuming that we actually move. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? 2021. (laughs) It's all in the air. Um, I would assume that our podcast, it will be at... A hundred thousand views. That's my hundred thousand listens. That's what I'm that's what I'm rooting for. Yeah. And um hopefully we have lots more patrons, lots more friends of the podcast, lots more people writing reviews and sharing and and chatting with us and giving us book recommendations. We've been getting so many good book recommendations. Yes. Oh, you know what Bridget and I really want? We want your fantasies. Oh yeah. That's what we want. Tell the people. Okay. Tell the people. So, so Bridget and I, of course, like I used to write fan fiction back in the day. Bridget is an awesome writer. And so we are going to take foray a little into the novella territory. Yeah, we are. But we want to write what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we are looking for suggestions on fantasies that you have. And it could be anonymous if you want. Yeah. You can you can straight up DM us. Yeah. I mean, we have not been shy about our fantasies. <laughs> It could be, and it could be like, it doesn't have to be like fleshed out. You don't have to have like character names in a plot. It could just be like, I really would like to see an enemies to lovers book where they meet at a, you know, yes. quinceanera and they're the aunt and uncle, whoever the fuck, yeah. you know, like, I don't care. Or but. you can, or you can not tell us anything about the story and just say like, I want characters who do this sort of thing yes. sexually right. in, in this scenario. Right. Okay. Yes. It doesn't matter. I want we characters want who want to be chased. Okay. We can work on that. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, that will happen. We can deliver that. We can deliver that to you. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna step into that realm. We're also gonna. Oh my dig god, into Shani! I fantasies. just remember that I have like three stories that I wrote and are in my filing cabinet. I'm gonna bust them out before we talk next. Oh my god, bust them out! I'm gonna lay in your bed. And you're gonna read them to me. I I'm gonna read them to me. Bridget, sexy corner. Corner. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, mm-hmm. hey! Shimmy, 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 shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we were but trying yes, to like so- think about obviously ways to monetize the podcast so that we can keep going. And so a lot of people we've seen do things like, you know, how to start your own podcast. They develop courses about that. We both are YouTubers and I like consult YouTube companies. So it's like, I was like, oh, we could do some sort of YouTube, like how to YouTube for dummies, et cetera. Like, and we're like, oh, and I was like, but readers just want to read, you know, like let's give the people what they want. They just want to read. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to write a novella. It's going to be exciting. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how it goes. Yeah. It could be good. Could be trash. But I know what it will be. Smutty. Yes, it will. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be trash. <laughs> you know why I don't think it's gonna be trash is because um, both of us are very of two of us. Well, because there's two of us, so we can't do it yeah. in a bubble where you think this is so great, and then you realize like, oh wait, this isn't <laughs> great. Whoops. Because no. I already see it. Because it'll there'll be a thing, and then you'll be like, Rashani, well, why would they do that? And I mean, Bridget, why would they exactly. do that? That doesn't make well, sense. Well, that's the other thing is I feel like it'll. Oh, thank you. We are going to. Um, I. Yeah, I feel like it's partially that. Partially, we're like both very like story driven people in general, but also I feel like we're very practical about feedback. We've been working for so long in different creative things where people are constantly giving us feedback and we're like taking advice and we're used to criticism and we're used to incorporating that and making something better. And like, 
um, oh, yeah, kind of sure. like working towards like, you know, weaving our way through to find like the best end product. And I don't feel like we have an ego about that. Um, which is why our podcast like works so well together. Cause we don't have an ego about yeah. that stuff. And so I feel like that's why we'll get to a really great product. Cause I feel like if I said to you, Shani, I know you love the scene. It's terrible though. And I hate it. <laughs> we should change it. I think you'll be like, okay, fine. <laughs> like what should we do instead? <laughs> and vice versa. I think if you were like, yes, Bridget, I know you think that that's funny, but <laughs> no one is going to understand that. And I'll be like, okay, fine. Well, let's do something different. And that will, yeah. Also, you guys, if you yes. want to like follow along, we're going to be posting about it. I don't know if we'll keep posting about it because maybe you guys don't care, but we are going to be posting about it. We have like a two week January. My children are going to daycare and five days a week. It's so exciting. And so we're going to have like a two week intensive writing together and like just in general doing a bunch of podcast stuff, you know, choosing all the author for season six, submitting all, you know, to all of them, inviting them all, talking to all their publishers or if they're indie authors, just talking to them or to their, their people. And, um, so we have a lot to do for the podcast, but also we're going to just be doing like writing intensives and giving you updates. And so I think it'll be fun. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Because <laughs> it'll be Bridget's sexy corner and Shani. I feel like it should be like, and Shani's smutty mind. <laughs> and Shani's smutty mind. Yes. It's, it's got to go like that. It's got to go yeah. like Bridget's sexy corner and Shani's smutty mind. Oh, I like that. Make us a new jingle. We need more jingles. I do want to give all props to Shani because she makes us the funnest jingles. We are, I mean, Jen, I'm serious. We, this is the whole plan in January. Like we are, this is what yeah. we're doing the first two weeks of January is I think we could write the entire first draft and then I think we'll do the initial edits. And then I was thinking we should probably get like someone to do a quick pass who's an actual editor just to make sure they catch like, cause you know, I hate when there's like grammar errors and shit. So no, we have to have an editor. We'll just pay someone. Yeah. Pay We've someone talked so much shit yeah. about the books that don't yeah. have editors. We have. Yeah. To. We'll just pay our, our homegirl Ari to come and edit it for us. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, yeah. And then we'll uh, get someone cool to do like a beta. We need a beta reader. Oh, fun. We do need beta readers. Ooh, we need beta readers. That's cool. That's the thing. If we're going to dive in, we got to dive yes. in. We need beta readers. We need beta editor, you know what I'm saying? And then we got to make a cover art and stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm all like, I'm jazzed for that. I'm jazzed. I'm jazzed. Super jazzed. My mind is, you know, my mind is just reeling right now. I have so many thoughts, Johnny. <laughs> I always have so many thoughts. I'll make it, Jen. Hey, Jen, question for you. Oh, Do you Jen prefer- wants to be a tribute. Uh, tribute. Jen wants to be a uh, <laughs> beta reader. <laughs> Hell yeah, girl. You're woo, in. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, Jen, do you like covers that are R-E-I. cartoonish in nature? We just talked about you. Or, um, or when they have like the bodies on them, you know, like the necks, the arms, the backs, <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh, Ari is here. Hello, Ari. Shani, oh, show her. Show. Ari, we just were oh. talking about you because uh, we were just saying that we were going to write a novella and uh, Monogamish Pod, they were saying that they're going to be one of our beta readers. And we were just like, man, we got to get an editor too. We better talk to Ari and get her to be our editor. Um, <laughs> Ari got books to write. She's got books to write though. I know. I don't even want to hire you. That's a good point. We shouldn't hire you because we want you to write more books. But Shani is going to show you the award that you got for this year. That's Ari best, best novella. Hooray, we I will love have you. you know that I have read Ribbons and O's um, multiple times nice. at the end of this year. Which I've not read anything multiple times <laughs> this year because I've been like, I don't have any time. <laughs> Ari, you made our 2020. Let me tell Yay. you. <laughs> yeah, so we hope that more people are looking at your books and buying your books. I know a couple yeah. of people have bought them through us because we've been seeing our affiliate links. So hopefully lots more people listen to the podcast and keep buying your books so you can write more. Yay. Yes. That's all I want. I just, I just want authors to keep writing. Like, mm-hmm. I just want to be part of the fun. I think we're going to go through that same thing where we're like, we're not authors. <laughs> we're, we're right, like 10 novellas. We're, like, we're not authors. We're, not authors. we're podcasters <laughs> who sell our we're own podcasters. books. <laughs> okay, so Jen said, the newest trend is making me hate animated covers. Everyone's doing it even when it doesn't fit. Oh, yeah. I agree. I, agree. I think that's the biggest thing we talk about on our thing is the 
like if it's animate, if it's like illustrated, I want it to be selling like more of a rom com feel. And I don't want to have, like, dark issues in there. I don't want to have any sort of, like, I don't even want to have a lot of angst. Like, if I'm getting illustrated, like, I want it to be fluffy and delightful. Yeah. Hit me in the feels train. And, Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Because I think in romance, you absolutely judge the book by its cover. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're going to do it somewhere, that's where you're going to do it. And the, the animated covers, we got so surprised by so many books, I think, over the last year and a half since we started the podcast or whatever, because we were like, wait a minute. Got tricked. I thought this was going to be a we light We got jaunt. tricked a couple times. <laughs> Especially <laughs> the contemporary season, man. They they got us. They got us they good, got us. Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I think we were, we some we were pleasantly surprised. That's some true. We were, That's fair. Uh, That's fair. We were like, what? That's fair. You know, like our, our best in the feels, which was um, the kiss quotient, mm-hmm. We really thought that was going to be a lighter, a lighter type feeling story. And even though it was still and less a very steam fun story, too, and it was very, steam. Mm-hmm. we thought it was going to have less steam. And then it was steamy, so and steamy. it was good. And we were like, "Whoa!" So like, it was definitely interesting to the animated covers. I'm hoping that the trend mellows out. I don't want to see all the animated covers leave, but I do hope that like. I don't know. There won't be so many. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I will read 20 books with a steaming hot chestesis on the cover <laughs> or a, a neck, mm-hmm. you know, a little shoulder, mm-hmm. a little lady shoulder off the, yes. off the, you know what I mean? Like get hit him with the shoulder, like boom. Oh my like, God, Jen, hard agree. Hard agree on that one. Um, I, yes, I'm also like very, very into the lady covers where there's like a scandalous, like you see like just a thigh high, you know, or something like that. And you're like, a scandal, what's going to happen? Like, take me to there. Um, I feel like our dark romance series, I don't know if we're going to have any covers that are illustrated. I would assume that they are going to all be um, people and mm-hmm. photography and probably all dark colors. And Shani, you know what I was thinking? I was saying this at the very beginning of the live stream before you hopped on. Is that yeah. we should do a Highlander. I'm just saying Highlander because you know I like Highlanders, but it could be any historical. Yeah, you know, but we should do a, hi- a dark, one or two dark romances in historical. So do like a bodice, a true bodice ripper, and then like a yeah. Highlander, like maybe someone's getting sold into marriage or kidnapped or like something like that. Yeah. No, like my, some of my favorite Highlander <clears throat> books, which I can't remember the titles Kerrigan, anymore, but Kerrigan Brian, Brian, Brown, Brian, Brown, Brian. I think her name is. I, <laughs> but some of my favorite. B R Y N. Brian. I don't know. She was recommended but, as someone who has good bodice ripping Highlander books that are dark. I love dark. I loved bodice rippers yeah. when like when I was younger I read every bodice ripper that I could get. I went and looked up a list of bodice rippers <laughs> and like got all those books. I remember when this was I don't I don't know if this still exists but like Amazon had like a whole book community and a whole like thread forum. And so I went on there and asked people, like, hey, what are your favorite bodice rippers? And oh, my God, people lost their <laughs> fucking minds. <laughs> Dude, all these dark romance Facebook groups that I have joined, because you guys know that I unwillingly joined a lot of Facebook groups this year for the podcast to help us grow. And, man, people love dark romances. They are, yes. like, I got, like, in a day, I got, like, 30 recommendations based on what I asked for. Yeah. Wolf. I'm excited. It, it's definitely, like, it's... Uh, it's a thing. Yeah. And to pretend that it's, a it's not a thing. It's a and com- it's a fantasy. Yeah. It's I for and me. People have some crazy ass fantasies. And for this not to be allowed to be one yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like it's the thing we always talk about, which is like it's something I can live out in a book that I would never want to happen in real life. Like the I was yeah, exactly. I was saying that I I already crushed, which we're gonna read on the podcast, Devil's Night by Penelope Douglas. And like, do I want to be a, a kid who's, like, fucking burning shit down and there's, like, people trying to kill me? Or, like, do I want any of this, like, bad? Do I yeah. want the guy who I'm in love with to, like, treat me like shit? No, I don't. However, I want to read about it. <laughs> and I want I want to know if they end up together and if they can, like, figure out how to work it out or if they're going to, like, stop lying yeah. about their feelings. And, yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. And also, it's like sometimes books do a really good job of coming back from a trauma mm-hmm. within the same book. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's just been some books that have done it really well. Yeah. So it's interesting to see. But I'll be excited to go into dark romance season, you know, letting go of a lot of these, like, just 
ramifications of things that I definitely feel when we do contemporary romance. Um, because it's like, well, why would you do that? Oh, he's a fuck boy. That don't make no sense. That's not romantic. Yeah. Um, but you can let it go in fantasy. You can kind of let it go in dark romance. Yeah. You can let it go in historicals. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you like a chauvinistic type guy, historicals allows you to like that type of character. Um, and so I think dark romance, a lot of those are contemporary. Mm-hmm. And so it uh, is a good avenue for people who want that kind of feeling, mm-hmm. but in like a, a safe, you know, a safer, safe and more modern longer. setting. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, 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 well, yeah. obviously, we're going to be choosing all of our books next week, but I want to, um, as always, you know, I'm always trying to get diversity into our seasons between the authors, the pairings, the indies, the traditional publishings, the just like all the things. So I want to figure out like how we can represent sort of like a lot of different, like we're going to be doing, Johnny, I want you to know this in advance, a suspense romance in the dark season, because I have been recommended a couple that are, uh, they're dark, but they're also like more like suspenseful shit going on yeah and i know it's not All your right, favorite you know, i'll read it we if, have if it's to. in the pocket it's not my favorite it's not have my favorite to. uh but yeah anyways but i think I'll i think it. it'll be fun and then i'm like super excited about next year because they're just like going into like aliens and cyborgs and paranormals and <laughs> some more historicals and like a bunch of novellas to round out the year i think it's gonna be a really fun year i mean what a great like thing to do though to have a podcast where you read books in like a year where you're quarantined and you really can't leave your house too much. <laughs> For real. For real. I mean, it's really kind of. For real. Yeah. <laughs> really kind of yeah. perfect. Like, I'm happy we didn't uh, start a but... podcast like reviewing plays on Broadway or something. You know what I mean? Like, that would have yeah. been so. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's tons of content creators who like focus on yeah. going to sporting events or focus on whatever. And I'm like. Yeah. Um,. What did she say? I love that. You, yeah, this is a great comment, you guys. She goes, yes, diversity. I love to see it. Also, I hate suspense. But you should do Rebecca Weatherspoon Beards and Bonded series. Not really suspense, but dark topics. We just did Rebecca. We did Zenny. So maybe we'll see if we can find another one of hers to fit in um, at some point next year. I would like to revisit Rebecca because Zenny wasn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. We love, I, I love the couple. Yes. But the story itself yeah. was... Uh, the outside story and the outside characters was lacking yeah. for me. Um, so, but the potential was there. And I, I really like the when we read a, an author mm-hmm. and maybe we don't resonate so much with that specific book, but you can see the potential for that author. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give her another read and see, uh, mm-hmm. and see how I like it. Yeah. I give every author two reads. Mm-hmm. Two reads to catch me after that I move on. <laughs> I know we've said this before, but I want to send this out as a PSA to all people who are listening and reading. If you have read three or more books by an author and you do not like any of them, you need to just stop reading them. I know the book covers are beautiful. I know that they suck you in with everyone else's reviews, but it just turns out that that author is just not for you. And that's okay because there's lots of other authors and I think they would prefer that you don't read their book than that you read it already knowing you don't really like their books and then you lambast them because I think that that's a little unfair (laughs) Like me and Shawnee aren't going to read, like choose to read a couple authors who we've read. Oh, I've read a couple of the books and I don't like, I hate all of them. Like, why would we review that? Like, we want to tell you guys about books we're excited about, authors we're excited about, books that like, you know, made us horny or books that made us, you know, feel our feels. So that's my PSA to you. And also one that I'm going to try this year is I'm going to try to DNF books that like just really aren't working for me in the first yeah. Like 50 pages or 100 pages. Like I always force myself to finish and I have to stop forcing myself to finish because they never get any better. If I don't like the first 100 well, pages, I don't like the ending. Like, and yeah. I have to just like embrace that I won't know the ending and that's okay. And that's okay. Well, half the time I just skip to the end and just see how it wraps up. Yeah. And then you realize you didn't have to read all the pages in between to get there because nothing yeah. really Yeah, happened. or just it's read like the K-dramas. last chapter. Is that what you're saying? That's a good idea. I could do that. Yeah. Just like I just go through the last chapter or the last two and I just see how it rounds out. You and know? then bounce. Okay. But, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Absolutely. Like, like I was watching this. Uh, there's a lot of K-dramas that are like this. Uh, and I was just watching um, Secretary Kim yeah. a while back. Uh-huh. Nothing happens in the episodes. You can skip 10 episodes and be right in the story, <laughs> you know. And this year I've actually wanted to, to DNF many, many books and some of the books for the podcast. But you have to finish them because right. we're going to do a podcast right. on them. But I'm just like, there's nothing about this book that grips me. And it 
kills me to give a book just a one or a zero star. Right. But sometimes I'm just like, right. yo, what is happening? <laughs> to, Jen, to be clear, like I read 100 pages in like, I don't know. An hour, like, like, like 80. So, like, it's like an hour and a bit. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I hated this. Like, I gotta move on. But then I'll just sit there and finish the book. So, it take, it doesn't take yeah. me that long to read 100 pages. But, um, which is also some of the I'm reasons why I say I should. I'm reading at least two authors. At least. Hold on. I'm reading. Oh, you're giving a last uh, chance to? Okay, I'm reading this as. So, um, another bookcase. Hey, how's it going? Is saying I'm planning on reading at least two authors in 2021 that I'm giving a last chance to because the story sounds good and I love the characters, but I just can't like the whole book. Yeah, we hear you, man. We hear you. Yeah. It like sometimes it's 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 hard because you're yeah. like I do like what you're doing here. Yeah. I also I also I, get mad about the hype, don't you, Shawnee? Because like I see people I do. who like five star books and I'm like. Even if I loved this trope or this genre, this is still maximally a four star. But I think yeah. our ratings are a little bit. Um, <laughs> hey, ratings reading is no fun. No fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's so you're good. not wrong because you start steaming as you yeah. keep going. <laughs> like I see, like our our scale of of rating is like one would be like hate it DNF, two would be like just did not like this book, three is like this is a solid book, I like it. Four is like, this is really good. We recommend it to a lot of people. Five is like, this is a banger. You should buy immediately. And so I think that a lot of people do kind of like, it's either five stars or one stars. Like any book that they like is yeah. five stars. Um, and I, I, I feel like it makes me sad because that's also part of the reason why we had a couple books, especially in season three, where we didn't like them because... I had like read like 25 five star reviews and I was like, this book sounds dope. The cover art's dope. The description is dope. Like I want to read this author. And then we read it yeah. and I was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, hear, hear me out. Sometimes I feel like there is, um, there's this thing that happens where if a lot of people are going one direction, like a herd mentality, other people will also go in that direction. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, sometimes I read um, the reviews for a book, and I think there's so many good reviews on it, but a lot of them I feel like are paid reviews or, or people getting their friends to review mm -hmm. it. And then other people think they're supposed to like it or whatever, or be, maybe the book is special in some way because it has some sort of diversity in it. So they are like, I'm not going to be the one to bash that shit. Mm -hmm. you know. And so then it ends up like... This whole love fest of for a book that does not deserve the love fest. Mm -hmm. And you you read all these reviews and then you read the book and you're like, you guys just flat out lied to right. me. You lied right. 100 percent or you only have a third grade education. <laughs> like it's kind of one do think, of the two. I mean, one thing we talked about was like if we start interviewing authors, will it be harder to be fair to their books? And I think there is an instinct when you interview someone and you really like them to want to give their books a better rating because you're like, you don't want other people to be like, oh my God, you hate everything. Or, oh my God, like, but you love this author so much. Like, how could you savage their book or whatever? Um, oh, but I feel that way. But I feel, I feel like we made a decision so really early on that like, we weren't going to do this unless we were going to be completely honest. And I feel like we've stuck to that. Like, I don't have any um, books where I feel like, ooh, I lied about my review. Like, I feel like every book... Yeah. Um, it, the first time we interviewed an author before we did actually did their book, remember after that, I was like, I want to do people's book before I meet them <laughs> yeah. because, because, so I have a hard time lying and keeping things off my face. Right. So if I read your book and I hate it and then I'm interviewing you right, right after that, within like a week after that, it's hard for me to like. I don't right. know, to, like, just keep my face in a way when they're like, oh, well, I do this and this and I'm like, sure. yeah, that's not working for you. I, I think you should abort that, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> well, one thing so I said, very... I think what I said to you in response to that was, like, we don't have to talk about this specific book. Because of that, the, yes. the author I think you're talking about, you had read other books you liked. And I was like, we don't have to talk about that review at all. We don't even have to tell them, like, that's the book. We could just talk about them and just, like, other stuff and not ever yeah. talk about that book. Um it is it when when you told when we talked about that and you said that you know that kind of 
use that as a gauge in my brain <laughs> yeah. to be like, you know what, just keep it about them yeah. and the interview process yeah. and whatever, and don't think about whatever book we just read sure. or whatever that thing is. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing is like it, a lot of the authors, because of this like new method we're doing where we interview first and review second, a lot of the times... Not a lot of the times, but there, I think there's been like two others where you're like, <laughs> I was like in the in the interview, I'm like, Shani hasn't read your book yet. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't reviewed your book yet. It does, Jen. <laughs> it it does. Like when you interview authors, it's it's if you have a face that's very hard to to like lie, and I don't mean that some people out there have lie face. It's just I think there's some people who have a great a really hard time keeping things from showing. Mm. You know, uh, and I have one of those faces. So if I don't like what's happening or whatever, it's like, it's all very expressive. Um, and so I remember the first time we we interviewed an author where I had just read the book and I was like, this book is not my favorite whatsoever. Um, there was like, for me, the first 10 minutes of the interview felt very awkward. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I had to like f- figure out whatever. But the thing you find is that you love these people mm-hmm. as people, as authors. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, you're just a big nerd like I am who decided to pick up a book and write it and throw it out there and people are critiquing it and da da da, whatever. Um, and so you love them as an author. And then it does when, like, Bridget and I are very strict about giving things the rating it deserves, mm-hmm. whether or not we like people as people. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but it does make your heart hurt a little sometimes where you're just like, oh, I would like, because you're rooting for them at that point. You know what I mean? Bye, Jen. Um, but like you're rooting for them. You know, there's authors that I, especially indie authors, right? And especially authors. Oh, wait, maybe she's not color. saying bye. Maybe she's just, oh, she's yeah. just telling us. I thought you were saying I have to duck off. That's all I saw. I was like, bye. She's just saying. Oh, oh I see what you're <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. You guys, I misread a comment. She's not actually leaving. She was telling us that she also has to turn off her camera. So uh, her they camera. can't see her we're real like, feelings. Why? Even in even in real life, when someone says something where I know my face is going to be whatever, I turn. Very I got quickly. in I big trouble like, at the Oprah Winfrey Network when I was working there because I was in a meeting with an executive, and <laughs> she said something like, "Just fucking nuts," and I was just like. And I like, I was like, cause I was also like, she was talking about like, oh, like it's going to be X amount of money and blah, blah, blah. And I like also like literally was like, where did she, I was like, I've been in this meeting the whole time. Like, where did that number come from? We've never mentioned that number before. And I was like, yeah. and she's just like, what, you have a problem with it? And I was like, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope, sure don't. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know where I was like, I'm, uh, and finally I had to like, she like wouldn't let it go. I had to be like, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm sorry. I, I I've been taking notes, but I think I missed uh, where that number comes from. She's like, well, if you add these two things together. And I was like, oh, except for that, it, they like shouldn't have been added together because they weren't yeah. like, so like, anyways, but I got in trouble and she was not happy and she was like a very important person. And uh, yeah, I was not in any meetings with her after that. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Yeah, definitely. In my defense though, um, she was full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, happen, that happens a lot. But I did that learn ha- very quickly at the Oprah Winfrey Network how to just, like, smile, nod, and take notes. Or just look at my paper and take notes while, like, and just in my notes I'd be writing, that doesn't make any sense. But, like, how to, that's why I'm so good at just uh, nodding and smiling at crazy stuff, Johnny. Yeah. The Oprah Winfrey Network. You heard it here first, guys. Also, with the last comment about, like, not commenting on, on posts that are tagged to the author. Oh, okay. Like, one of the things we encountered when we were talking to authors is how, like, people will write these scathing reviews of their book and then tag them in it. That's and nuts. We just find that kind of That's disrespectful. That's so rude. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, beautiful photo. Yeah, Talia said that. Talia Hibbert, we were interviewing, and she goes, oh, my God, they'll tag me in this beautiful photo of my book, and then it'll be, like, two stars. I thought this book was meh, meh, meh. And I was like, they tag you? Like, we, I only tag people in their interview, obviously, because they were there for that. So we tag them in all the interview promo. Yeah. I tag them in, like, the promo, like, that we're going to be reviewing their book in the future, because a lot of authors will share that because they want people to, like, you know, see their books out in the wild. But I don't tag anyone unless it's five stars. I don't even tag four-star people because I'm like, they, you know, like, if they want to hear, they're only going to hear that they lost a star, because I know myself. Like, I don't hear that it's four stars and we loved it. I hear, like, well, why didn't it get five? (laughs) And um, so I only tag five-star people, and that's it. Yeah, that's, I'm like, 
uh, we do we do a job. I think that doesn't um, it's for readers require tagging for the person who who yeah. wrote the book. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is we we are here for the readers yeah. and not the authors. So I would prefer that the authors search us out because they are looking for that content versus we tag them and then smack Although, them in the face. Do you want to tell? Like, Come over here. Do you want to <laughs> tell everyone about the author who searched us out, Shawnee, in season one? Oh, oh, our our first author hate. Our first author hate. <laughs> Uh, well, we talked about this on the podcast, but um, I was actually very excited about this. I like called Bridget. I'm like, oh my god, Bridget, we got like a negative review on YouTube. Of course, um, it was on YouTube so, too. That made it even better. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't even know that it had made it there. Because at that time, YouTube, I was putting stuff up on YouTube, but it wasn't the primary platform that I was like checking regularly. Yeah. It was just to make it more accessible for people who couldn't, right. you know, watch it any other way. So. Uh, I go on there, and um, I, I, I want to say it was, was it Like the Wind? Mm-hmm. Or Cake. No, it was like. Or, yeah, so it was Like the Wind, but then there was a Cake series that she also wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, she wrote on there basically like, hey, I'm, um, like, you guys are so, <laughs> are so mean. You're mean girls. That's what she said. Yeah. She said, we're mean girls. Yeah. And that she's just a stay-at-home mom who writes for fun yep. and to bring enjoyment to people. Yep. And that, you know, like, basically we were terrible for, for yeah. you know, doing this review of the book yep. because it was, it was a scathing review. We did not enjoy the book whatsoever. Um, I actually don't even, kinda, I, I didn't ever go back and listen to it after that, but it was not our worst review. <laughs> I don't, we didn't give her a one. Most, I think we gave her No, but two. it was. I think we, we didn't give her high marks. I think we gave her like two. or two. three. But I, I definitely tend to be more savage than you do. Um but <laughs> but um, I definitely remember that the book didn't make sense. Like, how the timeline of how they got together and whatever. We were like, what and where? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. How oh, yeah, happen? that's right. Okay. You know, You're right. So that's it, a two-star. We didn't give it a good review, <laughs> you know. And, um, and so she was very upset. So she left us this yeah. comment. And I left her a very respectful comment back, basically saying, like, look— we're podcasters. We we leave, leave ourselves out for criticism sure. as well. People can go rate us and review us. Mm-hmm. That's the nature of putting out your art. There sure. will always be a critic for whatever it is. Um, I want to tell you guys that Shawnee's first comment she was going to write back was fucking savage. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think you should put that on our on our it, on our. It, I, I was like, you're going to make no, this poor woman had, cry. I didn't have. I never had a savage comment. I I was more of the like kill him with kindness and also like. <laughs> Uh, the thing about it, the main reason I disagreed with her commentary was that... Oh, yeah, you're not a Audible, mom. You're a published author. You get money for this. You're a published yeah. author. She had already had series yep. out there. This was not her first book whatsoever. Yeah. And then Audible had commissioned sure. this book. Sure. So a major company commissioned her to write that story. Yeah. Um, you're an author. So you're not a I was, stay-at-home mom author. anymore. <laughs> You're not writing fan fiction. You're not writing Sailor Moon fan fiction right now. Mm-hmm. You're, you are an author. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Definitely. So, <laughs> so it was definitely an interesting experience. But I loved it. I called yeah. Bridget right away. Yeah. I was like, Oh my yeah, god, we have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> also, right before we interviewed Sonali Dev, she goes, <laughs> she goes, you guys are savage in your reviews, and we were like, Thank you. It's <laughs> so nice of you to say. <laughs> Her interview is really I, great. I, uh, I love her. I love Sonali. Yeah. I I uh, I loved her book, and it would have made the list, except I didn't feel like her book was a romance, a true romance. Yeah. So, like, her book actually, for me, I think got four stars, and I would have given it five if it had been more of a rom- about the romance. Mm-hmm. But but if it was a fiction book or a women's fiction book, I would have rated that book a five because it would, had depth of character. It was, like, so I, I just... Like exactly, or the book was heavy. Yeah. So if I'm gonna pick up a, was, a romance, that was one of the I'm illustrated covers. Tricked us. Yeah, tricked it was us. one of the illustrated covers. You know, but I love that book. I love the complexity Her writing of is it. Great. I, yeah, I grew up um, with Indian culture as like a, a like a thing that was heavy in my life. So don't ask questions. It just is. <laughs> so um, reading that book resonated really well with me. Um, but I didn't sign up for a heavy story like that mm-hmm. in my romance. Mm-hmm. And then it was more about the mother-daughter than the actual mm-hmm. love interest and her. And so that's why it didn't make our list for for the awards or the or romance. But Sonali can write. Mm-hmm. She can write her little ass off. Mm-hmm. And I hope that she writes some more, like, romances. I just want them to be a bit more romance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she or just switch the category. 
She could. I mean, she saying. could sell really well in in like a more fiction, women's fiction, whatever that category is. Yeah, absolutely. That's like the stuff my aunt reads on. You know, like she could she could write that hands down and be big at that. You know, One of my so. aunts follows our podcast. <laughs> What if you're at? Does she listen? Oh my gosh! Does she listen to us? I don't know. I didn't ask. I know she follows. She's commented on some of her. She loves Julia Quinn. So I think she saw one of my Julia Quinn things that I posted on my personal one. Um, I wish so too, Jen. Uh, <laughs> I would have had you come on. I know, dude. Um, I know. I was thinking. I was like, if any authors wanted to join, I was like, I I think I started it. So I was like, what was it, like? Shawnee gonna drop for a minute? Then pop him in, pop him back and out. And I was in. like, that doesn't make sense. That's too complicated. <laughs> I know. Why can't it be like, you know, they have all these apps now where you can have like, you know, we could have like four squares or something like that. It feels like they should be able yeah. to have more than two people. <sighs> have you guys heard about uh, uh, Clubhouse? No. Is that like it's House like, Party? It, Similar to House Party? I have no idea. I'm not really sure what it is exactly. However, I know that it's invite only and everybody only gets one invite. So you can invite one other person to it. A bunch, apparently there's a bunch of celebrities on there as well. Who might just pop in and it's like some sort of social media app thing oh you're on it jen okay because like like you you have to find somebody with an invite who can actually invite you Mm. it's not like house party okay i don't know what it's quite like because i have samsung Mm -hmm. and so in order to actually do it i have to put it on my i have a secondary iphone but i have to like back it up and do this whole thing before i put ios 10 million on it um it's a lie that you only get one invite there there are ways around that. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to talk about that because I need to know. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's it's some secret type of or whatever. And apparently some stuff goes down on there. I've had a few people contact me like randomly like, yo, are you seeing what's on Clubhouse right now? And I'm like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not one of those uh, cool kids on Clubhouse. I'm not cool. I'm not cool. But I'm not cool enough. I, I'm not cool enough. Yeah. Shani, this has been a goddamn delight. It has been. And it's been really nice to have people join yeah. and give us a commentary because yeah. that's what makes this shit fun. <laughs> it's like a, a book club. It is like book club. We should do a book club, yes. Shani. One book. You keep one. I want to do book club. Would book you, guys, club y'all. you guys who are watching right now, would you do book club with us? Like if we kept it real fucking chill, like one, oh, nice. one okay. of the books of our season so, like, maybe, like, four or five a year. Not, like, every month or anything crazy. But, like, if we had, like, a book club where everyone could come on to, like, a Zoom or whatever and me and Shawnee would chat and you could hang out with us and talk about a book. And we probably already would have done a podcast about it. But, um, yeah, would you come do book club? I don't know. Would y'all do a book club? Let us know. I am. I Bridget is all about the book. Club. I think it would be fun. I, you just think it's going to be like, more work, but we're already reading the book. Yeah, but we're already reading the yeah. book. It would be like it's it's going to be like watching when we watch shows with our Instagram or with our um, patrons. It's going to be exactly about like patrons. that because you've mm-hmm. already read the book, you've already done your notes. It's going to just be us okay. talking about it. I, I'm open. If, if, <laughs> if y'all want to do a book club, I'm open. Okay, but you got but you got to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I think we could do like one a season. Jen says she likes book club. See? You know me, I'm just like, mm. <laughs> one. I think one a season. And let's not get crazy. We'll just choose. All right, let's, let's just put one in and see how it goes or whatever. <laughs> if we're already reading the book and stuff, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not saying it's an extra book. It's the same book. Fine. See? Fine. Two people. Two Fuck. people. I love it. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys DM us if you want to be in the book club, and I will send out uh, something about it. Uh, oh, Three. Yes. Oh, everyone wants to be in book club with us, Shawnee. Yes. <laughs> like, why did we talk about this shit? Book club, man. I, think, I just think, like, you're envisioning extra books, and I'm telling you, I promise it will be the same book you already have to read. All right. All right. I'm, I'm down. Okay. I'm, if three people are down to do it, I'm like, that's a club. Now we have a club. Now we got a club. Now we're the Potato Literary Society. <laughs> literary, yeah, literary and Potato Fuel Society. Great book. Great movie, you guys. All right. Um, I think that's all we have for you today. You guys, dear listeners, that's all we have. friends on Instagram Live, this has been an absolute delight. Absolutely. Until next time, Shawnee. Fucking book club. May your books be your lover. 
and your hand, your best friend. I was ringing the new year right with a great book and your right or left hand or both, depending whether you're ambidextrous or not. We leave that up to you. Stranger? (laughs) Bye, y'all. Bye, you guys. Bye. (laughs) This was so fun. Uh. I love this. This is really fun. I really enjoy this. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to get new episodes, clips, and more. And click here to watch our previous reviews and author interviews.